It's the Muppet Show with our very special guest star, Mr. Meerkat. 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 The Ma got the Meerkat. Meerkat. That's a fat Meerkat. Oh, Hi. You know the Muppet Show? Well, I'm not that old, right? The Muppets are supposed to be a variety of sketch show, but we always come backstage to see all the stress and shenanigans of making the show. Well, imagine the metafictional audience that attends these shows and imagine that show with wrestling. That Muppet show was TJPW's Grand Princess 2024, and I mean that in the best way possible. This show was a variety of all forms of wrestling. There were musical interludes, pandas, crying from both wrestlers and fans, and for Five hours, TJPW managed to keep every single match fresh with its own story and logic. We got Sayori Namba, oh hi Namba, a live performance from the Upper Girls, Autobahn. There was the six-way tag team match featuring all the newest rookies. If you've ever read the Game of Thrones books or any deep fantasy or deep Star Wars lore, you know how satisfying it is to see the many, many characters grow and evolve in front of your eyes. Wrestling is very much an epic mythology in this fashion. That's watching wrestling rookies. We had the debut of the former AKB48 idol Ame Yumoto. Her wrestling experience stems from the popular tofu pro wrestling that featured Sakura of the Seraphim. Anytime Ame commanded the crowd, they 100% responded, but it wasn't an insane reaction like you'd get from the women screaming ah! to their favorite idols. Oh, the hot idols, come on, weeps, yo louder. Now, Kakura needs to be cherished until she retires. They faced against Mahito and Himarari, who has her confidence locked right in and looked great in everything she did. This is that whole watching wrestlers grow fun that I was talking about. It's rewarding. There was a match featuring God, a child, a bird, a cat, and a giant panda. This was Noah's Ark, Palm Harajuku, and Raku versus Kaya Toribami, accompanied by Haruna Neko and teaming with the giant shape shifting creature Andreza Giant Panda, who has a higher cage match rating than your favorites. Yes, he can alter his size at will. If you hate is you clearly don't like fun and take wrestling far, far, far too seriously, which makes you think you take life far, far too seriously. So, like, isn't wrestling supposed to be fun? Is it supposed to be an escape? Is it an escape, right? Aren't you supposed to escape the everyday realities of fun wrestling? I mean, I had a blast. Here's my live reaction. <laughs> <laughs> TJPW is an anime because SKE48 performed in mini concerts for the live audience. There's international princess champion Yuki Arai singing and dancing. All the weebs be weaving, they be weaving. This also served as the graduation of Mari Katani, who will go on to work as a voice actress. Aww. Bye. I just met you. Next was Moka Miyamoto and Julia Nagano versus Toga and Wakana. Look at Wakana's new gear and that hairstyle. She took my breath away. Wakana added a new move to Wakana! Julia Nagano is graduating soon to focus on entertainment and her nursing job, which is a shame because you know in a couple years this woman would have been a super badass boss in the ring. You can see all the upside in her unique style and presentation. Very Arisa Hoshiki meets actual action film star. However, credit to Mocha for stealing this match with her performance and her Welcome. Punch! The next match was a banger. The White Dragon Rika Tatsumi against Masha Slamovich, who had TGBW called her, who was such a killer. It was a Western wrestling styled match, meaning after Rika does her little pose, Masha went, I'm gonna fucking kill you! I'm gonna fucking kill you! And this triggered the White Dragon into, I'm gonna fucking kill you! I'm gonna kill you! But then, oh! and then, oh! bang! Oh! God damn, son! Last time, on the chaotic adventures of Hyper Missile, the big Kaiser destroyed the hyperdramatic dream mobile, but even more traumatic was how the first hyperdramatic dream mobile was destroyed by Asa Kong. It was her Jason Todd, her Jason Todd, but after a crowdfunding campaign from the noble citizens of Japan, Hyper Missile designed a brand new hyperdramatic dream mobile. There goes our heroes, watch them as they go. But they are indeed facing monstrous Kaijus, the Kaijus, as Max D Impaler looking insanely cool and the legendary Ozra Kong. But hold up, hold up. <laughs> 
Before we continue, I have to bring up today's sponsor, Godzilla and Kong, the new empire. Are you a fan of kaijus and monkeys? Well, how about getting some sun for once and go see Godzilla in a tag team match with King Kong as they save the world from other kaijus, the kaijus. The last movie had Godzilla and Kong wipe out the city of Hong Kong in the biggest metaphor for American capitalism that I have seen in a summer blockbuster. That movie gave no fucks. Godzilla did his flame thing to the goddamn earth and then looked thousands of miles into the hollow earth to see Kong and screams at him. Now watch them tag team to save the world. Just follow the code Mirka Ha! In the description below to help this meerkat go to Japan. But now the chaos, the chaos, the underrated Shoko Nakajima, Max the Impaler going brr, 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 brr. Aja Kong being Aja Kong and Hyper Missile with a great performance as the protector of love and peace. You had the big kaiju holding on to Aja Kong like Goku to Raditz and Hyper Missile ram the hyper dramatic dream mobile into all of them. Holy shit! He also had Missile rise to the occasion against Aja, only for Aja to go like, God damn. But will our superheroes hyperdramatic dream mobile survive another day? Find out, same hyper time, same hyper. Oh, look at Ito singing her song. Oh, the cutest in the world. She's facing the murder grandpa himself, Minoru Suzuki, who has built such a reputation of being a serious killer that he brings perfect drama to comedy matches. It's like watching Goodfellas and then going home and seeing Home Alone right after. Joe Pesci and Minoru Suzuki can do both. I'm going to cover Maki Ito's performance in more detail in a later video, but the story was simple and very Maki. She did all her Maki things and the crying and oh, even Minoru made Matsuri cry. You monster. But the story was Suzuki treating Maki Ito like a girl and this drove a fire in Maki who had so many brilliant expressions as a defiant middle finger represented as a scared, manic aggressive cute woman finding the courage in herself to be a brave, manic aggressive cute woman and fight as hard as she can to make Suzuki fight back. And then he kills her. Oh, she's dead. She's dead. This was Rami Malek in the Freddie Mercury movie, a bleh movie with an Oscar winning performance. Maki Ito's performance was her best single acting performance that I've seen from her yet. Now, you know what is so great about TJPW? Besides everything, they would book the Magical Sugar Rabbits versus TDK, the Queen, Emi Sakura, and the ever tall, tall, tall bastard Chris Brooks, the grandest grand princess of them all. Chris against Joshi's is perfect because he'd be like, God damn, dude! Or, God damn, dude! and then also taking a beating from them or take the best whirling candy that I've ever seen. You have the solid friendship of the Magi Rabbits versus the bickering Gato Move team with Emmy trying to be queenly, with Brooks who doesn't respect queens and was taking the piss out of the whole thing. But the friendship of the Magi Rabbits was overpowered, allowing Mizuki to score the victory on our dear queen. Sakura was great here, it's worth noting. Bickering of Chris afterwards and smacking Masa. How dare you defy the queen, you big, big bastard! Final three matches were the title matches, starting with the International Princess Champion Yuki Arai versus the ever beautiful and gorgeous Yuki Kamafuku. With this gorgeous outfit of hers, she looks great. The battle of the Yukis, and I like Arai's faces and expressions the most, and I love her finisher, finally. However, with a move that is called finally, I think it would serve for better drama to constantly have to work for that move. It should dictate her entire style, a game of stamina, hurt them enough to be able to finally bonk their head with her feet. Arai is the future though, and she'll figure it out, while Kamiyu is always the supporting actor. Expect the video soon. There was the big, big moment of Daisy Monkey against Yuki Niki, Yuki Aino, and Ryo Mizumori that I made an entire video that kind of builds to this, but it was the fairy tale ending to a beautiful career arc of Suzume. We watch wrestling for the beautiful moments like this. Leading us into the main event, Miyu Yamashita is the absolute ace, one who exudes best in the world aura just with the entrance alone. True, true final boss energy, and she kicks the fuck out of Miyu Watanabe like. Is there a beam? Oh, okay. 
but this was Miyu Watanabe's lead role, and she reached a cathartic moment in the lore of TJPW. From the reaction that I've seen from Tej fans, this was the one they were waiting so long for, the one that they had a noose ready to kill Koda if he didn't do it. That's finishing a story. Your new champions are younger than 25, and this is the future of TJPW. I'm serious, best show of the year so far. It had every variety for anyone who hasn't even seen wrestling to begin with. The Padawans, the Idols, the Wholesome Violets, more Idols, Future Aces, Western Brutality, Saturday Morning Cartoon, the Tour de Force of Comedic Theatric Performance, the British Killing Bunnies again, Championship Defenses, and Back to Back cathartic stories reaching an end to their arc and beautiful synchronicity with a main event title match. Show of the year, and not one German suplex had to be thrown until Miyu Yamashita did it. Watch Tease, or God will smite thee! <laughs> Thank you to all my Patreon sponsors. We have Jeff, the Uptown Geek, and the West Daddies, Tees, Renee Voltage, Ace of Trace, Maddox, Justin Stein, Matthew Blitzuska, Nyoja, Fu, Terrence, Dan, Work, Kev Mullen, MK, Ray, Connor, She Can Party, Money 520, Juggernaut Graphics, Shopping Without Wave, Aaron Securious, 45222, I Want Victims, The Justice League of America, Julia, Sunglasses, oh, she's in Noah now. Julia has her sunglasses in Noah. G Wall, Paul Darwin, Pickle Slimer, Scott Racer, Stephen Siemens, Carpenter. D. Smoon, Lil Choo Choo, Tony Davis, Jesse, The Outlaw, Dodge, Morningstar, Doggo Snark, and Impossible! Zero three, thank you. Oh, sorry. Zero thirty three. Thank you.